Welcome to Color Compare of Purple and Pink Colors. We are going to lump these together because in the realm of paint, there is not a lot of like huge differences between the purple and pink. There is, but they kind of blend together, so they're worth looking at side by side. Of course, there are a few notable exceptions. So here's what we have. We have swatch sticks. On each of these swatch sticks, we have four different swatches of the same paint. This paint is painted over four different primers. Army Painter Matte White, Army Painter Brain Matter Beige, Army Painter Ash Gray, and then a generic silver from Rust-Oleum. And so we can maybe see a little bit of metallic shine with that silver. I swatched all the purple and pink colors that I could find, including the new Army Painter 2.0 Speed Paints, and I want to show you which of these are similar, which ones are different, which ones you can get away with, you know, maybe getting an Army Painter set versus buying individually, and which ones I like the best. The first thing we're going to do is look at some outliers, and here they are. First we have the Citadel Dreadful Visage. This is really kind of a more of a gray wash than a purple. It looks very, eh, well not very, but it definitely looks purple in the bottle, and so it showed up in the purple category. There's nothing quite like this here, and so we're going to set it aside as a little bit of an outlier. Also, the Citadel Magos Purple. A little bit more purple than the Dreadful Visage, but a very similar effect, and still nothing quite here. These will come back when we take a look at some of the Army Painter pastels, I'm sure. The next one is this here, Familiar Pink. Now this is pink. It is pink, pink, pink. This is new from the Army Painter Speed Paint 2.0, and wow, we do not have a color like this. This is amazing. I'm curious if, uh, I think they've got a pastel pink coming as well. Let me check my notes here. Yeah, very light uh, pastel pink they're calling Princess Pink, and it says it's a very light pink, versus this is a vivid pink. So we've got this kind of vivid pink color here. I am loving that color. I don't know what I would use it for, but wow, I'm keeping that one around. But as far as comparing it to anything, it is just way brighter and way more pink than anything we have. It's not even going to stand a chance side by side. The other one here we have is this Carmine Dragon. And now I was wondering if I should put this with the reds or the pinks. And it says on the practical naming chart from Army Painter that this is a brilliant pinkish red. Well, I think it definitely falls in the red, more than the pinkish or purplish, at least it's not quite what we're going for here. It is definitely way too red for any of those. I might bring those back in just a moment to kind of look at them side by side, but those are definitely our outliers. Now, after that, we do have some similarities, and the one I want to pick up first to compare is probably one of my favorite colors. This is Sigvold Burgundy, and I love this in a few different situations. One, over white, you're getting this very nice burgundy effect. Almost looks like it could be like a plush, like, cloth or something, or even whatever you want it to be. It's like, it reminds me of those big comfy chairs. If you put it over this dark gray, you get this really neat kind of flat effect. And well, ash gray is not that dark of a gray, it's definitely on the dark side. One thing I will say with this color, as I was painting it on, you kind of notice it seems to be missing in some places. It is very like not wanting to cling to the primed uh, surfaces. It definitely sinks into those recesses almost to an extreme that I'm not enjoying here. It took a lot of work to get it to cover this well. It was kind of like, like I don't know, running off like water on a waterproof surface of some kind. But this is very neat, and of course over the silver, because uh, who wants to you know paint some Caradron Overlords with this? I think I do. So I really like that color, and so when Army Painter came out with some similar colors, I was excited, and do I have a new favorite? I don't know. 
they call this murder scene, but honestly, it's this very deep kind of burgundy-ish color. It's not as, like, bright, but I almost kind of like it that way. It's a little more grim dark in, in some ways. Would make for a much kind of bolder, if not as intense, of a statement here. Now, they call this a black, purplish red, so I would maybe call Sigvold Burgundy a purplish red. And, uh, similar but different for sure. Which effect do you want to go for? Well, as we get into this also, though, we have to take a look at this Citadel Vulpus Pink, because it's definitely on the pink side of our purples here. We'll put it in the middle there, you can see it's lighter than either of these, but because I want to definitely bring back in a little bit of this, you can see why we're not really even comparing it to the Army Painter Familiar Pink. It's not that pink. It's still definitely in what I would call the purple spectrum, even if it is a definite red-tinted purple on that bulbous pink. Army Painter has a little bit of a similar color here with their purple alchemy. So Vulpa's pink versus purple alchemy. You've got a little bit of a lighter uh, texture, or not texture, but lighter color here with the Vulpus Pink. And also it is, I think, pulling away from those high points more. Uh, I don't know if I want to say that's in a good way or not, but it definitely more. You can see the difference there. So again, this was very um, liquidy, like watery, and flowing off and like not wanting to stick to the primed surface. Do not have that issue with any of the Army Painter paints, interestingly enough. If we grab our Army Painter Moon Lake Coral, then we are getting just, a, again, a little bit darker, but still going towards, I don't know, more of a light pinky purple. Like, it's not a Sigvold Burgundy competitor there. That's not where we're going. Definitely interesting, though. Different than the Purple Alchemy for sure, maybe a little less red. Very nice color, I especially love it over the Ash Gray, that Moon Lake Coral. If you can read my bad handwriting on these tiny little popsicle sticks. Moody Mauve, getting into a little brighter kind of purple. And so I want to just check here, that's Army Painter, what do they call this? They call it a strong purple. So Moody Mauve, still kind of pinkish, I think, for being a strong purple. They call the Moon Lake Coral a strong reddish purple. So, you know, similar intensity there, I guess. One just being a little reddish. I like these practical color names. I think that works for those. Pull up really quick our Purple Alchemy and our Vulpus Pink. You can see, again, we're getting a little similar there. Purple Alchemy and Moon Lake Coral just different enough to be interesting and kind of either one definitely the purple all can be matching a little better to that vulpus pink with that then we get into the purples that are decidedly not red and so i want to just kind of show you what we're getting into here before i put the reddish purples away and that is very purple purple even maybe a little bit blue purple so you see definitely red on here definitely not there. So, of course, with that, then we have the Periwinkle, and Periwinkle is even more blue-blue. It's almost like this dark kind of grayish blue, and I wondered, okay, what did Army Painter call this on their color naming sheet? Uh, which, by the way, you should definitely download if you're doing this. Uh, any kind of comparisons or um, wanting to paint some models. Periwinkle, they call it a purplish blue, and I'd say... Yeah, definitely. It's uh, kind of got this little bit of grayness to it, which I really like. And it's very versatile over these different primers, especially I'm noticing a larger difference than normal with the, the white versus the gray matter beige. But also you can see a texture difference here, and I think that's just how those two primers behave. We see that a little bit here as well with the Citadel. So we're getting into this bluish, but not quite that blue, because there's nothing else that is quite as blue as this Periwinkle. And so it's a very unique color. Almost an outlier, but I didn't quite put it with those initially. So let's check out a little bit more of this here. We've got our Luxian purple and our purple swarm there from Army Painter. Still maybe a little more blue on the Luxian. Army Painter purple 
Swarm, looking real nice here. It says it's a vivid purple, definitely vivid, definitely purple. Loving it that color, I'm a fan. Then we're getting into the darker colors, and we're gonna get into Shyish Purple, which is uh, Citadel's, or was Citadel's darkest purple until the recent Citadel release. Definitely darker than either of these, but still decidedly purple. And we have one more Citadel and one more Army Painter color. And the Army Painter color is our good old friend, the Hive Dweller Purple. And in fact, if we look at these, we get them up here. I'm going to kind of drop these two off now. They're, we're past that depth and we're into some very, very deep kind of stuff. That Hive Dweller Purple, they're calling it a very dark purple on their practical color naming. Look at those highlights over that white, and even on that brain matter beige, and even on that silver. Hive Dweller Purple has always highlighted well. It's been one of the best colors if you really like that level of highlighting. That effect is not quite what I'm looking for, so I don't know. You tell me if that's what you want. I really like the depth, though, and so I want it to kind of come out like this over the ash gray. The uh, Leviathan purple, similar but more intense. It was, you know, instead of a very dark purple here, this might be like some kind of a, a dark vivid purple. I don't know what you would actually call that with the practical color naming. So really, Hive Dweller purple is much closer to this shyish purple in that way than it is to the Leviathan purple. And you can kind of see these colors are actually almost exactly the same. So Leviathan purple here, yeah, just being kind of a really bold color, really intense color, which I really appreciate a lot. So I'm loving that color for sure. All right, to answer the question then, that I always love to answer at the end of these videos, how, what would I buy if I owned nothing? And I think the first thing that I'm going to be picking up, uh, this time is actually a Citadel color, and it is that Sigvald Burgundy. So I'm going to be picking that up. I really do like that color quite a bit. I will say, though, I also want to pick up this Army Painter murder scene just because it's so nice and dark. Do I really need both? I probably don't. I probably don't, but I'd probably buy both anyways because I just think they're so cool. I, I just can't put down this Leviathan purple. It is such a neat color. And I do like uh, painting with either of these, the Hive Dweller or the Shyish purple. Whatever one I end up with, I'm okay with either of these as long as I get one. So I'm going to put those kind of together on here as well. As far as the other intermediate kind of stuff, I don't have a lot of uses for uh, some of this like purple alchemy and the moon like coral and stuff like that. So I'm probably going to find something that is maybe pretty versatile for me. I may be looking for like a purple orc color of some kind, and none of these are quite that purple orc that I'm looking for. The purple orc color that I'm looking for is going to be more of this, like, purple swarm, and so I'm probably going to grab that for my uh, sneaky invisible orcs, uh, which definitely edges out something like a Luxian purple, where that's just, to me, a little too light for what I generally use. So I'm probably not going to pick up any of these just because I don't paint these colors necessarily, but, you know, if I get some sets and they come with them, then that would be fine. Of course, I own all these colors because I bought them for this video, or, you know, this series of videos. All right, one last little bit here to go through on the what would I buy. I am going to talk about the outliers because in this instance, I am actually going to pick up some of these outliers, and I'm absolutely going to pick up the periwinkle. It's just such a neat color. I gotta have that periwinkle. I'm gonna pass on the lighter, this kind of lighter stuff, the Magos and the Dreadful Visage. The Carmine Dragon, I don't know. I wanna see this next to some other colors before I decide if I wanna pick that one up. That one's gonna be more with the red, uh, but I'm definitely grabbing this familiar pink because come on, that is just, like, look at how bright that is. I wonder if I mix that with some UV paint, how that would turn out. Maybe we'll try it. So this is kind of my color palette, notably missing, again, those, uh, I want to call them the red purples. I'll flash them back on screen there. Notably missing these from my choices, so let me know if you are super eager to pick those up.
All right, folks, I hope this was helpful to you, that these color compares are useful. Let me know. And, of course, let me know what you want to see next. We've got some other great colors coming soon on the channel. I have all the um, 2.0 Mega Set, so we will be going through all of those eventually. All right, thanks for watching. Take care. Let's get gaming.